Hello YouTube. Now I'm going to apologize for audio quality on this and the next series of videos. My big computer is down for a couple of days as we do some electrical work downstairs in the basement and as such I'm on my laptop. I don't have my good mic set up and I might be picking up some background noise and stuff like that. So I apologize for all of that. But without further ado, I'm going to be doing a basically four, maybe five part video series in total talking about fixing Elite, and this video is the introduction of the problem as I see it. As I said, this is going to be a four-part series that I have pre-recorded and have released one part every day the rest of the remainder of this week, and maybe a week after that I'll do a follow-up comments video. But at any rate, today's video is just basically defining the problem as I see it, or the major problem. And then the subsequent videos will be talking about those various subsections in a little bit greater detail, starting with a background simulation, power play, and then what I would be proposing for a longer term area of gameplay that has kind of been hinted at, but how would I approach it in column, what I would dub, quote, colonization. And I'm talking about playing or fixing the general gameplay systems and mechanics. What I'm not talking about is going to be changes to technical issues and bugs those are always going to be present. It's the basically it's the beast that is software development. That that's always the nature of the beast. Those are going to be there. Those will always need to be addressed over time and hopefully things get better rather than worse. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Again, I've spent 20 years in this business of software development and around IT computers. Been there, done that. I understand what happens and I'm fairly forgiving of it. I know others aren't. So why? Well, Frontier's been soliciting player feedback as of late on their forums, on Reddit, other venues, and media. I'm hoping that this video gets their attention at some point. I'm not sure if I will post it myself, if somebody else wants to share it with them, uh, be my guest. But if it does hit Reddit or other media, I will chime in and stuff. And be sure to leave comments in the comment section below and give me your ideas, not only for me, but hopefully Frontier and you know others as well because I don't have a monopoly on all of the good ideas. And I think now is the time to address a lot of the long-standing long issues with gameplay. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm the biggest guru of the background simulation and power play and some of those mechanics. I don't know them inside and out as others do. But from what I've seen, I think that they are now in into a place where they're comfortable enough with the mechanics that the core foundation is there and working well enough that now they can probably comfortably make some changes, know where they need to do some overhauls and things of that nature. And again, I feel that the mechanics are largely in place and needs tweaking. Other people may not like those mechanics. People, A lot of people don't like the indirect action you have to take in order to, say, do power play, where you know group A does objective A, group B does objective B, and at the end of a week, whoever does more of one or the other ends up being, quote, the winning side. And as opposed to being able to take direct action because of the separation between solo, private group, and open, you know, of, well, I should be able to invade another player's instance and stop them from doing objective B. Uh, that type of gameplay, that type of direct interaction with other commanders or against other commanders in the broad terms of how it works with these systems, I don't think is ever going to happen. Again, technical difficulties with the peer-to-peer -peer networking and the fact that we have the different game modes as well as different platforms, you know, with Xbox and uh, PC and Mac players essentially inhabiting the same universe and having an impact on the same universe. So within those constraints is what I'm going to be talking about in integrating or I should say uh, changing around some of the mechanics. Caveat. I'm not an expert at the inner workings of the background sim. In fact, I understand the background sim and power play. It may be a layer or two beyond just a very high-level scope, but I certainly do not understand the nitty-gritty details of either. And part of this is the problem, and I will address those specifically in the BGS and the power play videos. I also have no knowledge of their code base. It could be some of the things that I'm proposing and asking for are just technically not feasible at this point in time and probably won't be for months or maybe even years down the line. I would really love to hear from Frontier Developments in just glaring generalities of 
And they do kind of do this. That would be nice. But a little bit more specific detail as in our back our backend database networking architecture isn't designed to handle some of those things quite yet. Hopefully, maybe in the future, if that's a direction they're leaning towards or not, you know, just a little bit of an indication. Don't need specifics. Don't even need specific time frames other than, yeah, this is something conceivably we could do with 2.3 or 2.4, or no, this is something that's probably looking at beyond Season 3 at this point. A little bit clearer, clearer def definition like that, and, um, you know, that that's really what I would hope for in terms of a developer feedback. Also, I don't have the only ideas out there. Now, again, these are pre-recorded videos, so if you make an excellent suggestion for the background simulation video, it ain't going to make it there for that video. These are already going to be pre-recorded, uploaded to YouTube, and pre-scheduled for release uh, basically at 9 a.m. over the course of the next week. So, with all of that out of the way, the problem as I see it is that right now we have independent layers of grind as opposed to an interconnected and interwoven gameplay system and gameplay universe. You have power play, you have military ranks, you have your pilot's federation rank, and they act independently of each other, and they need to be integrated instead of separated. I mean, there's very little interaction. Yes, a little bit of, you know, if you're pilot's federation combat rank will go up if you're doing power play missions that involve combat. Your trade rank will go up if you're doing background simulation missions for factions that are trade missions. So things there are some interconnected and interconnectivity between like your pilot's federation rank and the background simulation and your pilot's federation rank and power play, but there isn't much direct interaction between the background sim and power play, for instance. And the separation hurts because it provides a lack of agency. Basically, if I'm going out there and, you know, conquering the galaxy or helping ALD, for instance, conquer the universe, this has very little impact on what's going on with minor factions or the larger superpower factions as a whole and my military ranks within those factions. And this doesn't make a lot of logical sense. Now, people can say, you know, oh, it makes my, you know, immersion killing, it breaks my immersion and all of that crap, but... Things like a king admiral. How can I be a king in the Imperial Navy and an admiral in the Federal Navy at the same time? And going back and watching some of the David Braven videos with GamesCon and stuff when he was talking about the nature of societies within the Elite Dangerous Universe, you know, it explained to me in, in modern world that one of the very few ways that you can lose, at least in the United States, you can lose your U.S. citizenship, is to go join the military of a foreign power, as expressed in the Constitution. So how is it that I can be a king in the Imperial Navy and an admiral in the Federal Navy at the same time? Now, I've talked about this in other videos. My solution to this would be to remove or change the current ranks, instead of being, quote, military ranks, I would have them as security clearance, quote, unquote. Because I could see you holding as an, uh, you know, background rogue agent, third-party agent of earning the trust of both the Empire, the Alliance, and the Federal, and, and the Federation, and then being able to be trusted by those entities enough that you're given system permits and permission to buy their military ships or something like that. I could see a reputation system there with those powers that have some sort of rank, you know, but I would call it, you know, an agent being an agent of the empire versus the Imperial Navy rank. And then I would add a rank, an actual proper military career uh, to the game world. But again, more for another video. Well, how is this fixed? And I think that this is where the discussion oftentimes, I don't want to say necessarily breaks down, but a lot of people will describe the problems without proposing solutions, and the point in the rest of these videos are to propose the solutions. I'm doing the, the major problem as I see it today in this video, and then proposing specifics on how I would go about fixing some of the issues. And I'm going to start with the background simulation. And we'll talk a little bit more about the ranks issues and stuff like that in that video in a little bit more detail. 
fixing power play and adding new gameplay. And that's going to be what I'm going to quote dub colonization and how that could work and how that could give players and player groups more of a sense of agency within the galaxy because it is a huge effing galaxy at 400 billion stars, I believe. Is it 400 million or 400 billion? Either way, it is an incomprehensible number to most rational human beings, and therefore, why the hell not from a perspective, logistics perspective? A couple of closing thoughts here. The solutions that I'm going to propose are not things that are going to happen overnight. Maybe some of them could be integrated into the 2.3 pipeline, the 2.4 slash probably 3.0 pipeline into Season 3. Some other things may not be there until Season 4. I know this will tick off some people, but if I know that they're coming on the horizon, pun intended, that it's enough to where Elite is a game that I do put down for weeks at a time. I've not been playing it very much the past couple of weeks because of Battlefield. But... It's one of those things that it is a game that I do go back to and come back to and play it a lot for a period of time, then put it away for a little bit and come back to uh, down the road when more things are added in and, and things of that nature. So I'm willing to be patient if and when Frontier and so far they've shown a you know that they're making progress, that they are... And they need to address some of the issues that we'll be talking about. At any rate, a little bit rambling there. Hopefully this video didn't end up too long. And I thank you very much for like or, uh, for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe for the following videos. And feel free to share this video on Reddit and the forums and other venues. Uh, and hopefully get it to the attention of Frontier at some point in time. After all, this is, at the end of the day, one man's opinion.